二十分間取ってますよね。そうですね。はい。だからあと一分ぐらいかな。Okay, I'd like to start the session.、Uh, the president is、uh, Mr. Koichi Takahashi.、Uh, the presentation title is、uh, Simulating Ur Cell with e c e l l System. Please. I forgot to turn on the, turn on the microphone. Okay, so、um, uh, I'd like to thank Masuda san for suggesting me to、uh, submit the abstract and give a talk at this fantastic uh, uh, conference. So, actually, it was a good timing for me.、Uh, I happen to be in Kanto area, so we had an ECL spent this week at、uh, K University SFC. So, it was a five day s event, and、uh, those about 30 Uh, people enjoy programming and uh, uh, discussions and wrote lots of code, lot, many lines of code and made friends.、Uh, it was a fantastic、um, meeting.、Um, the first time I learned about the Python language was、uh, probably about、uh, 1997 or 6 when I encountered this software called、uh, Grail. It was a web browser、uh, written in Python. And uh, uh, it, at that time, the initial version of this browser、uh, consisted of like、uh, 2,000 lines. It was a very、uh, a tiny piece of software. And I was quite、uh, impressed by the productivity and the、uh, conciseness of the、uh, Python language. So at that time, I was a user of C and C. And uh, uh, in our project, e c e l project,、uh, we use mainly C. Now, but Python is now. One of the main languages we use uh, after uh, more than 10 years.、Okay. So,、uh, we work in、uh, the area called computational、uh, biology. And uh, uh, Python is、uh, becoming more and more popular. Like,、uh, those, uh, uh, many projects are using Python as their main languages, like、uh, BioPython, which is a bioinformatics software.、Uh, Galaxy is also a bioinformatics package. PySB, LibSML, those are、uh, uh, the components we use,、uh, that those people use for、uh, simulations of biochemical reaction networks. Cobra is,、uh, is the same. PyMo is a visualizer of、um, uh, uh, the protein molecules. And uh, so uh, today I'd like to talk about our e c l project. So we started the project in 1996, and this picture is probably from uh, uh, around 1999. So,、uh, here, here's myself, and this guy,、uh, Kento Hashimoto, who is now the CTO of c r u p a l t Those two people started、uh, the project with、uh, Professor Tomida here. So, at that time, we had、uh, only a few people, but after three years,、uh, the, we grew to those,、uh, that, that many number of people, and now、uh, we have more people, as i shown in the PCS spin. And, We started this project because we think that、uh, simulation of cellular、uh, biological cells is a grand challenge, grand scientific challenge in the 21st century. Shown here is an、uh, illustration of the、uh, most uh, simplest uh, 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 cellular organism called E. coli. So, E. coli exists in、uh, the, the guts of your,、uh, yourself. Those, lo there are lots of、uh, this type of cell in your body. And this cell is about as large as a one femtoliter. Femtoliter is like a, a 10 to the 15th, a minus 15th liter.、Uh, 10 no, minus 15 liter. And uh, the, the uh, uh, physical dimension is like a, a, a hundred、uh, nanometer. Nanometer is a, a 10 to the minus 6th、uh, meter. And if you count the number of、uh, molecules、uh, included in this. Tiny cell, 
it's about uh, uh, millions if you count on the proteins and uh, uh, nu um, nucleic acids, which are the main players in the uh, system. So how do we represent this uh, in using, using a computer? That's our problem. So the first uh, software we created is uh, the version one of the ECL system. So we started uh, uh, the de uh, developing this software in 1996, and we, uh, we released the first uh, open source version of this software in 2000. So uh, here you can see the control panel uh, of the system. So you can start or stop or step the, uh, the simulation. And here's the current time. And those are the uh, what's called uh, tracer windows. Uh, here you can see the, the uh, change in the concentrations of uh, pro, uh, the, the molecules in the cell. Uh, here you can see what's called a GMAP window. Here, uh, this, those tiny windows, each of them uh, represent a gene. And you can see uh, activity of each gene uh, very visually. And uh, if you click the uh, gene, then you can knock, uh, knock, knock out uh, that gene very, very conveniently. And we created uh, some uh, variations of this version one called VC version two and VC version two D, which run on the uh, uh, distributed environment. Now we call this that uh, cloud environment, but it's basically the client server system. And after that, uh, in uh, 2000, I entered the graduate school and I started development of the next version, next second generation version of ESL called ESL 3. Here uh, you can see uh, the PyGTK based uh, gra graphical user interface. Uh, the ESL 1, for ESL 1 we use Motif X, X11. Uh, here, uh, this is a PyGTK and you can see uh, 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 some uh, three-dimensional 3D uh, visualization of the state of the cell. And we also created uh, some um, user-friendly version of that same system called ECL IDE. Um, so uh, it took about four years to develop the initial uh, stable version of this software. Now, uh, what we are doing uh, recently is unlike those uh, graph-based uh, the uh, time trace based simulations we are doing uh, what we call single molecule uh, simulations. The, the idea is to track individual molecules in the cell uh, using the uh, uh, physical laws of Brownian motion. So here's this, this is a simulation of neuron uh, cells uh, and uh, this is the uh, uh, cellular amoeba, how information is processed in this, uh, cis, uh, in, in this cell. And this is a simulation of human cell. Uh, this is the uh, simulation of uh, the molecular clouding, which is the, uh, the extremely high density of proteins in the cell, which breaks down the physical laws of uh, chemical reaction uh, rates. And this is E. coli simulation. Uh, this is the simulation of microscopes. Uh, which, this is uh, actually quite important because after simply visualizing the result of simulations do not uh, give us some images that are compatible with what we get using uh, microscopes. And we had experiments uh, using microscopes to get uh, uh, the how or what's, what's going on in, on in the cell. Uh, we need to be able to compare directly what we get from simulations in silico and what we get from experiments. So this is quite important. So uh, the, we work on uh, simulation of cellular systems because uh, this is a very, um, how, how to say, the sophisticated information processing machine. Um, okay, so our cell in the uh, nucleus, we have genome, DNA. DNA uh, contains information uh, about uh, as large as uh, 700 uh, megabytes. Uh, it's, uh, it's about one fourth of DVD. So uh, this information stored as, as, uh, in the DNA molecule is read out in, uh, with a process called gene expression. And this results in uh, some different types, lots of different types of proteins. Uh, those proteins are created using, uh, by the, the, this process called gene expression. And then those proteins uh, 
uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, makes it possible to uh, uh, in, uh, to uh, enable the process called metabolism. Metabolism is the process of uptaking uh, food and uh, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, making those food as part of ourselves. Okay, and then this is. Uh, uh, and the result, the net result is the uh, the uh, uh, the feedback to the external environment, and because cells need to uh, uh, to regulate how which kind of proteins and which kind of uh, um, reactions uh, should be uh, 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 should start according to the external environment. This ex external environment is sensed by uh, the protein molecule on the surface of the cell called receptors. And then this uh, uh, starts the uh, process called transcription regulation that controls expression, uh, gene expression. Okay. Those three processes, signaling uh, gene expression metabolism, those three processes are uh, forming a kind of cycle in the genome, proteins, and you know, external environment. Okay. And this kind of uh, information processing is uh, super efficient. The genome contains about uh, 700 megabytes of the, uh, the information. If you do uh, the, the, the information search of a database at the, of the, uh, about the same size of this uh, the, uh, 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 data, then I think we are uh, using this kind of laptop computer. Uh, I think we need uh, energy as much as 10 millijoules or something. For example, uh, by the way, the Google search uh, requires one kilojoule, which is much uh, much larger than this energy. But if you do this transaction on memory, and then it, it's going to be about 10 millijoule. You can compare this number with the uh, if, uh, the energy that is required for uh, the protein to search the information in the genome. It's it should be much smaller than the energy uh, of uh, of 100 attojoule. Okay, the difference is huge. Difference is as, as huge as, for example, if you, if you, you uh, replace uh, the uh, information processing that is requiring your cell using uh, your laptop computer, then you're going to need lots of um, uh, nuclear plants. Yeah. So if you, uh, the, uh, the information processing occurring in a cell, in a cell, is uh, equivalent to the information processing uh, that, that is occurring all data centers on the earth. If you replace this using computer, then you're going to need billions of nuclear plants. So that's the problem. And there are lots of different processes are going on in the cell. As I said, as I explained, metabolism, uh, gene transcription, signaling. But those processes, uh, uh, each of these processes are very uh, um, complicated, and they are talking to each other. So there are two needs for a cell simulation software to meet. One is to be able to represent very different processes. If you have very different processes, you need to use different simulation algorithms. The problem two, requirement two, is to be able to talk to each other. So we, uh, while making uh, the uh, submodels using different algorithms, we need to be able to uh, uh, let those sub-processes to talk to each other. How would you do this? Do this? In computer science, there's an idea called a discrete event. And discrete event is a, a kind of a mathematically proven to be universal. Universal here means that a discrete event simulator can emulate the behavior of all kinds of time-driven simulation algorithms. For example, uh, you can, using this, this discrete event simulator, you can uh, construct a simulator that is be, uh, uh, possible to uh, solve differential equations, which is continuous, but different from discrete systems. This is continuous. Or uh, you can, it, it can also emulate the behavior of discrete time simulators, which is another type of simulation algorithms. So the ESL is based on this idea. So we started the, sec uh, the first generation uh, uh, development of the first generation kernel, of which codename was uh, Serizawa, in 1996. So this was a discrete time uh, simulator. 
And uh, uh, we used, oh, it's, uh, there's a spam mess. Uh, we used the idea of uh, object orientation for this. So we could uh, combine metabolism and engine expression using this version. In the second generation, that was the basis of the ECL uh, version 3. So uh, we, in addition to those ideas, we included a discrete event and Hellman integration. That is, this is a key idea for uh, discrete event simulators to be able to solve continuous system differential equations uh, efficiently. And uh, uh, at this version, we were uh, able to do multi-time scale, multi-algorithm sim simulations. We used this to combine those uh, uh, signal system simulations with those other parts of the cell, uh, metabolism and energy expansion. And now we are working on the third generation kernel called Yamada. And as I shown in the movies, uh, we are working on molecular resolution simulations. And for uh, making the, to make this possible, we need to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, deploy our uh, software, software on our supercomputers. So we, are, we have uh, uh, some uh, focus on high performance computing. So this is the same diagram in showing a different way. So second generation kernel, we started in 1996 to uh, the 2000. In the second generation kernel, uh, from uh, 2000 to 2004. And the third generation kernel, which is the uh, current development version. Uh, the second generation is a current uh, stable version. In the uh, current development version, we started in about uh, 2008 or 2009, and we are still working on it. And, and then I'm going to talk about computer languages. So what language to use uh, is a kind of philosophical problem. The, the, this is a paper we wrote in, on the uh, 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 IEEE magazine in 2002. So here we compare the number of, uh, uh, some numbers between uh, the serial systems and artificial systems. Uh, traditionally, uh, the targets of simulation has been uh, quite uh, um, sometimes a large scale, but uh, the model itself was not so complicated. If you compare the number of compartments in the electric circuit, th this is usually one. Uh, uh, fluid dynamics, this is usually um, uh, tens. Uh, molecular dynamics is one. Number of components, uh, there are lots of uh, the components, but uh, uh, the numbers, you can compare those numbers with uh, components, the components, the number of the molecules and species in the cell. And what's striking here is the number with component types. The types of proteins in the cell is as much as the number of genes. So we have about 20,000 genes in our body. So that means there are 20,000 different types of proteins. And you, you, have to, you have to define interactions between the combination of those uh, uh, many numbers of different types of proteins. So this gives rise to what we call ontological complexity. The ontological complexity here is the complexity that exists by itself in that system. You can compare uh, this ontological complexity uh, with the emergent complexity. Emergent complexity is, for example, if you do the um, uh, weather forecast, okay? This, this is a simple fluid dynamics problem. The, comp the number of components is like uh, pressure, the variables, uh, the pressures, and the, uh, the flow, or something like that. So it's uh, the, the only a few number of uh, uh, types of variables. But, because this system, uh, the Stokes equation, contains some nonlinear term. So if you do the numerical computation, then you get what's, what's something uh, emergent, that is something uh, uh, non-intuitive. That's the reason why you need to do computations, simulations. But in cellular systems, before doing the simulation, the, the complexity is already there. So um, here's our idea in combining uh, languages. So at the, um, on in one side, in, for computing, we need efficiency. So for that, we need to use some native languages. Our choice is C++. On the other hand, for user interface, uh, we need productivity. And for, uh, of course, we also need productivity for our development front-end uh, software because the architecture itself uh, are often quite complicated. And also, we want to let users uh, write uh, their own scripting. 
uh, scripts. Okay. In the second, uh, in the first version, uh, the architecture was actually uh, monolithic. Everything was written in C++. In the second generation, ECL3, we uh, try to combine C++ and uh, Python using Boost Python library. I, yeah, uh, so there is uh, an interface layer, but uh, this there was a very uh, problematic uh, component, and uh, we were kind of um, it took long time to uh, come up with uh, something so, uh, sufficient. But now, now we we have this uh, this architecture. In the current version, in current development version, we switched to Cython because this is much simpler and uh, you, uh, uh, and uh, uh, it turns out to be. Um, our choice. And, but at the same time, we started using parallel computation. So in addition to C++, this, uh, we also uh, using functionalities called OpenMP or MPI, distributed computing or split-based uh, parallel, parallel computation. And one difference between uh, the, the second generation and third generation is that in the second generation, we had a main loop in C++ side. This was for performance. But now we uh, did some change of architecture, and we now have the main loop in Python. This alleviated the uh, complexity of its code uh, very much. So uh, I think uh, we had uh, some progress in uh, combining C++ and Python. But for future, what we uh, would expect from the software committee, the computer language committee, is that some high performance High performance as well as high level language. So one language fits all, kind of. And I think uh, combining different languages like uh, 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 the style we have for now, but uh, for future, we cannot continue this combination uh, uh, for good. I think uh, we need to switch, we need to develop something that can do productivity computing, uh, coding in addition to efficiency computing. So um, here I would like to talk, uh, uh, give uh, some few words on uh, support computing. Uh, we have um, a computer called K in Kobe. This is one of the uh, fastest supercomputers in the world. Uh, this has uh, millions of cores and 10 petaflops computer. So on this machine, we are uh, trying to run ESL system. And there, there are uh, some different types of components we have on ESL systems. But uh, here, the data is taken from the, some uh, uh, algorithm called p-spatial site. Here, uh, we, what we, uh, we are showing here is uh, uh, the, the scaling performance. Uh, the x-axis here is the number of cores we use, and the y-axis is speed up, speed up. You can compare the speed up uh, given by p spatial site to the ideal speed up, linear steep speed up. So we can now uh, uh, make uh, good use of, efficient use of uh, uh, about 16,000 cores, and we are trying to use uh, 32 and 64,000 cores. So the idea is, that in addition to uh, MPI, uh, MPI parallelization, distributed memory, memory uh, parallelization, because those uh, uh, the components are, are multi-core, we need to combine this with multi-threading. Uh, this is what we call uh, hybrid uh, parallelization. Okay. Okay. Now, I get back to minutes. Just yeah. Okay. Little less than five Okay. 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 This is uh, uh, what's going on in the cell. So essentially what's going on in the cell is network of reactions. And how we represent uh, this network is like this. So we define some components. This uh, box is a protein. And proteins have some different domains. Here we, I define two different domains. This domain is used to, uh, to form a complex of molecules called dimer. And this domain has two states. Depending on the states of this domain, the, uh, the, the function of the, this protein changes. So how we represent this is used to use this kind of network. Okay? But because although we have only two domains, the combination, this is a combinational problem, so that you have to uh, define all possible states. And of, uh, often uh, it is impossible to write by, down by hand. 
So how we use uh, Python in our software is something like this. So this is de facto uh, representation of this uh, version network called BioNetGen. This is really important. And we are developing the uh, Python version for our uh, software itself. So here's our, how we define uh, those networks. Here we define the components, and here we define the reactions. But reactions are uh, represented in a way that eliminates the uh, ex uh, combinatorial, combinatorial explosion. So uh, the problem is that this doesn't look like Python, but this is actually Python without the Python interpreter and the modified, okay? There's, there's lots of over, overloading. The basic idea is to use the uh, introspection of a function. So we get the undefined uh, uh, variables before executing the code and replace those undefined symbols with what we, what we call any callable. And then uh, uh, we hook uh, the call to those uh, undefined variables, and then we collect the result uh, as a result of this, the execution of the code. And then, uh, although this model itself doesn't uh, do, uh, uh, represent only six states in 23 uh, rules, after 10 iterations, we could uh, get those, this number of hairball, uh, lots of reactions, lots of interactions. So this is quite useful in modern, uh, very complex reaction networks, okay? Then this is the last slide, okay? So what we need in future Python? Maybe as I said, I think uh, what we, uh, the, the, the one important thing is like uh, language fits all. So we have C++ for library layer, uh, Python for you know, application layer, and uh, uh, OpenMP, MPI, uh, different libraries for parallel or computing. But what we need is to combine those uh, different layers using a single language. I think uh, Jira has a very um, uh, important suggestions. I don't think we are gonna use Julia, but uh, I think uh, if uh, Python community could come up with something uh, it's conceptually the same as this, I think uh, it, it's gonna be very useful. And maybe a use of LLVM would be um, the one possible solution. And of course, we will, we will need even higher performance for NumPy and SciPy, the libraries we use for email comp computations. Uh, that's basically it. Uh, so I'd like to thank uh, those people who helped me making the slides and uh, uh, Masuda-san for inviting me and all other members of this project. And we are looking for people. If so, if you're interested, you can talk to me. Thank you. All right, we still have about three minutes for questions and answers. If anybody has any questions for Takahashi-san. Hi, uh, thank you for the presentation. So you were showing a protein network indicated a Markov process, mm -hmm. which are dependent on the current status. Mm -hmm. So uh, how about the hysteresis of a uh, dependent hist history? Yeah. My question, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a problem, uh, problem. So basically, there the are two possible ways. One is to represent the memory of that component using states. So you increase the number of the domains that represent the memory. The, the other uh, the possible way is to include those memory in the, those arrows. So how long will simulation depend on the time to all history or generating a result depending on real time, uh, target okay. time? Okay, the target time is basically, if you, uh, depends on the type of systems. For sequence simulations, the time scale we uh, simulate is like uh, tens of minutes. And if we include a uh, gene expression, because in gene expression occurs in the time scale uh, from hours to days, so we need to run as much as hours to days. But this is very, uh, very uh, computation intensive, so um, it's not easy, but we, we are uh, trying to do that. And reactions itself, the turnover uh, time scale of proteins is like a millisecond or something. Diffusion, microsecond. So you can think about the time difference. Uh, the microsecond, second, hours, then the difference is like uh, 10 to the sixth, at least, 10 to the ninth sometimes, 10 to the 20th sometimes. Then maybe, not only your history, you have to depend on the long time, so 
Uh, memory, yeah. yeah. Memories are stored in the way that uh, some memories are stored in the protein structure, some memories are, pro are stored in localization of proteins. There are lots of possible mechanisms that can uh, hold memory in the cellular systems. Okay, any other questions? Oh. Yeah. ECL seems to be a very complex scientific open source project and, uh, uh, and it um, carried out for more than a decade. Mm -hmm. So is there anything that should be, uh, can be elaborated about the management about the software development collaborations mm -hmm. to sustain this heavy development? Mm -hmm. I think the most important thing is to stick to the problem. <laughs> because we have the very specific problem, well-defined problem, cell simulation, we could continue the project. Without that, for example, if we just focus on developmental software, then when people leave that software, then the, the project disappears. I think it's important. And we had uh, some different versions, and uh, we had some uh, the trajectory of evolution of software. So we uh, always looked for good problems to solve, and we modified our software in, according to that. I think that's important. Okay, uh, thank you for the talk. Um, uh, were there any significant reason uh, under uh, migrating uh, boost Python to oh, Cython when you that's started? That's a question for you. Uh, you uh, he is the, the person who Develop, uh, develop that part of it. <laughs> you can explain. Yeah, I think uh, he has a, a session tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, so he, he can talk about uh, your experiment in this project. So we have a preview for tomorrow then. Okay. <laughs> All right. Actually, uh, oh, sorry. actually are there three people who give talks from our uh, project? Uh, Mozo and uh, Onoris, and Onoris is helping us uh, to be developing some part of the software, and myself. So I think uh, I'm very glad to be here, and uh, it was, I'm enjoying this meeting. So thank you so much. All right, great to see such collaboration. All right, another hand for <laughs> Mr. Takashi. Okay, so the next. Uh, Lectures at three o'clock, or we have a break and then three o'clock. All right, thank you very much.